friends, it's Kelly McKinnon. So we are almost at the start of school for our school district. Um, and we have two of our four boys still in K-12 school. So today I'm hanging out in our youngest son's room and I'm just gonna go over a little bit of how I am prepping his space for remote learning. So I'm gonna show you some of the things I have um, as far as getting him organized and ready for the school year. I will tell you that most all of this either came from the Dollar Tree or was repurposed from somewhere else in our house. So as you're doing this, don't feel like you have to go out and buy all new stuff unless you just want to go out and buy all new stuff. More than likely, you have what you need already around the house, with the exception of maybe a few things. So we've got um, just a standard little pencil cup and a little tray. Both of those from Dollar Tree, and we'll fill those in a minute. We've got our nifty desk lamp, and it's a touch lamp that changes um, light intensity. So in case it's cloudy, he can actually face this towards me and have good light for his videos also. Um, and this also came from Dollar Tree. And then we basically got a clear space. There will be a place for his school issued Chromebook. So that will be on the desk once we finish the final setup. A few other things that I looked at making sure we had. So I don't know if you can kind of tell. We've got his bookshelf over here um, set up and ready to go with all of his stuff. And so there is a little space here. Um, I had some extra baskets. I think these were actually part of my pantry organization. So I had a couple leftover baskets. And this has um, the bag for his music stand and the bag with his violin supplies in it. So that's gonna go in there. And then we can stick any extra um, music or school things in there on this bookshelf as well. And then there is one last space. Um, and that may or may not house either a bin or a shoebox, depending on what our final material list looks like. So let's get started. In our pencil cup, we're going to do our standard pencil cup items. All of these I found at the Dollar Tree, so we've got mechanical pencils. A pair of scissors and pens. So we've got black pens and blue pens and actually what I'll do is I'll split these in half and do half for him and half for his brother and then some highlighters and a mini stapler. All of these things are actually probably somewhere else in our house. Actually the orange one belongs in this room are actually probably somewhere else in our house. However, what we want to make sure of is that while he is working on his schoolwork, he doesn't have to get up and down, up and down, and come hunt for things as he needs them. So we're gonna make sure he has at least a little bit of everything he needs right here at his desk in order to go ahead and be successful. Um, I also found around the house, I had a bag of little eraser caps, um, earbuds. I buy these little earbuds and then they come with a little mic so you can mute them. I buy those on Amazon in a multi-pack for like five bucks. I think it's four in a pack for $4.99 and I just keep those because I'm tired of paying for the fancy ones and they keep getting broken. So we're gonna go with these. So we've got earbuds, erasers, um, if you're like me, you may or may not have an office supply hoarding issue. So I also had some post-its available. We had some school supplies left over from last year, so we still had note cards from the gigantic pack. He may or may not need them, but we'll put them up here. And then a couple of glue sticks. So we'll go ahead and get his cup set up and put a few of these other items in his little tray. So 
so quick and dirty. We've got his materials in here and ready to roll. So this way, when it's time to work, he doesn't have to worry about trying to find a pen or pencil or anything like that. Now, what if he needs a notebook? Well, we are here, we have our bookshelf and we've got a couple of options. More than likely, um, 12 year old tends to be the one who likes to keep everything together. So I had an extra binder. I'm not sure that he'll stay with this design. There may be one floating around the house that's a little more his style. Um, and we'll just do a binder with notebook paper and graph paper in it and set that right there on the bookshelf and he'll be ready to rock and roll. So if we are going to use multiple subject composition books or multiple notebooks or folders, make sure you have a place that they all live, like a magazine holder. And then you easily pop those in your magazine holder. And this particular desk has the little side shelves on it. So I would slide all of those right there in the side shelf and you're ready to rock and roll with that. So that is notebook and material organization. What about some of your other items? So we know he may at some point need markers, but not something he'll use super frequently. So those are gonna go in the side, in the box on the side in the bookshelf. Um, I bought mechanical pencils. We do still have, you know, regular pencils that live around here, um, live around the house. And so I have one main mechanical pencil sharpener, electric pencil sharpener that stays in the living room near the desk where we have the printer and some of the other office supplies. So things like that, that everybody will use that don't get used quite as frequently, don't need to take up real estate on your student's desk. Um, so these are all things for, you know, upper elementary, middle school, high school age children who are pretty independent and can manage and function this type of setting, mostly on their own. So what do you do for younger children? So if you have younger children, pretty much the same thing as far as subject areas go. So you can keep one large multi-subject notebook. You can find them in college or wide rule. So just make sure you look for wide rule if you have the younger children as they're still working on their letters and writing and things like that. Or you could keep smaller folders with all of their separate subjects like this. The other thing you can also do is keep separate composition books. Um, some schools will have recommendations. Some schools will not as far as what will be the best way to stay organized for younger children. Figure out the system that's gonna work for you and for them, so you're gonna to have to help keep them organized and on track. If it's gonna work best to have one notebook and you keep that in the central spot, maybe by your office space from home, then do that. If it's you keep it in a bin, then do that. So the other, which brings me to the other suggestion. The other suggestion is to make a box or bin. So this is a basic, um, 12 by 12 cube. Yes, I just happened to have one or two extra lying around from a project I never took them back because um, they match pretty much all the other areas in our house and you never know when you might need one. So if I had younger children um, that really might need some help with some of their work, I would probably store most of their schoolwork in this. So use an enclosed pencil case for their markers, crayons, pencils and then store any of their notebooks slash workbooks in here as well. Um, in addition to a bin like this, um, I might would actually also put either like a little blanket or a small pillow. Um, if you have kids that can read independently, toss in a couple of books in there so that while you are working in your space, if they need to be close to you, but they don't actually have work to be working on, you can say, all right, look in your bin and find something to do for the next 10 minutes while mom finishes up this call or while mom sends these last few emails or while dad does X, Y, Z. 
So that way, especially for a bigger bin like this, you can toss in um, books, you can toss in puzzles, any kind of um, manipulative activity that's not going to make a lot of mess and it's pretty easy to pick up. So if you have, um, I don't know if you guys remember the tanagrams, the shapes, um, a geo board, things like that would be great to go in the school bin as well. Um, just in case you need to find as parent or caregiver a few extra minutes either before or after your child is working on their lesson to do things and they can work independently while you're right there with them. So a bin like this would work. Um, I just knocked that over. A shoe box would work. You can do real something real fun, especially for shoe boxes like this. You can do permanent marker Sharpie and they can decorate it, put their name on it. You can, if you have a Cricut and are super crafty, do some vinyl cutouts and put those on there. Um, any of that stuff would work in your school bin. So a few other things I would suggest, and I actually made these at the beginning of quarantine um, for some of our students at church, but you can also make a busy bag or a busy box. So in here, is a composition book. This is supposed to be completely unrelated to school. So if you have kids who are writing yet, um, even if they're not writing, they can always draw. So they can use this and draw pictures of um, they want to do in it. There are some different types of stickers in here, some shape um, and geometric stickers, some pipe cleaner, crayons, magic markers, sidewalk chalk, uh, down in the bottom are some popsicle sticks, some erasers and glue sticks. So in this busy bag are some things that if you need some independent work time, maybe it's not time for their next teacher or live meeting online um, and you don't have the time to dedicate for the moment to sit with them and work specifically on something, you can ask them to do something from their busy bag. So draw a picture of something, use the pipe cleaner and the popsicle sticks to build something, maybe something that they learned about in school already, or something that they think they might be learning about in school. Um, with these foam stickers, there's numbers, there's letters, they can start putting together um, words or putting together math problems. Um, one of the suggestions that I had for the composition book, you can have, so especially your older elementary students, start them writing a, writing a story or writing a play, writing songs or poems. And it only needs to be 10 or 15 minutes worth of this at a time. Um, anything longer than that, and you might start to lose kids or they might start pulling out tons and tons more things, but that is something really easy and really helpful to keep in the school bin area, just in case you have um, a period of time where you're not able to be immediately focused on them for the, you know, for a short period of time. So that's an easy way to do some independent activity without resorting to screen time. Um, so we've got the busy bags. We've got the basic school layout for students. So, even though we're doing something new, there's no need to stress out. Just remember, keep calm. Bye.